What's up guys, my name is Lex Feltes and welcome back to Learn with Lex. We're gonna jump straight into part two of Cash Games. A bit big. A bit again. Attack some hands like Queen 10, Queen Jack, Jack 9. I also feel it's gonna be a little bit hard for me to uh, bet rivers on this board because he's gonna expect me to have one pair so often that when I do bet, they might uh, I might open up the door on a lot of bluffing. So. Yeah, raise pre-flop and a bit to flop. He's trying to get rid of ace highs. I get called though. And over here, ace king takes it down. It's gonna get out the way now. Cash games are cool though. It's like I said earlier, it's like you have to, you just have to be very aware of the fact that the beauty of cash games isn't in the single race pots. It's when you three bet people. That's when cash games get super interesting. But I, I actually think that the, the disrupt between cash game, the way people think cash games are played and the way they're actually played, that difference, that gap is, is way bigger than in tournaments, I think. But it's so hard to, to keep shutting these tournament ranges in my head off. But it's no reason to bet. If I'm betting here, then I would be bluffing with my hands because I'm not going to get value from worse. And my hand can win at showdown. Very important to consider as well. We want to bluff with our worst hands and we want to value bet with our best hands. And you might think, wow, that is so normal. Why are you even saying that? But you will see so often that people will turn on a board of like Jack 10, 5, 6. They will turn a pair of 10s into a bluff. And it's just like, what are you doing? You know, that's, that's the opposite of what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be bluffing with hands that can't win. Value bet with hands that win the most. Value bet the most with hands that win the most. We see this time and time again. I have so much respect for people who can play cash games in tournaments at the same time. And this is exactly, this is gonna happen a lot. I actually think that if I want a four bet here, I really need two cards that can make a straight. So ace 10 or ace jack suited, even hand like king nine suited, I think would be better than this card. Um, so, um, I'm not gonna four bet there. I also don't want to call because it's gonna be three way and my hand's kind of dog shit. For that, also a really good player. Again, I don't really see what we're value betting against. Um, if we have nines here, then our opponent can have eight sevens and sixes. But when we have sixes, the reverse is true. I'm just gonna fold this. Offsuited, we play relatively tight from the small blinds. I mean, the fact that we only play nine X and higher, right? Like king nine, queen nine, jack nine from the small blinds is already quite crazy. Crazy adjustments. I mean, a lot of these things I'm saying from um, the mind of a tournament player but first of all that's what i am second of all i actually think that most of you guys approach cash games as tournaments as well with similar ranges similar bet sizings lots of small bets lots of limping you know min raising it's just vastly different oh i think this end is gonna have to be a re-raise quite pretty good uh, i'm just gonna bet Those 66 percent ah. and over on the other table also re-raising i actually think that this is a good hand to re-raise hands like 10 4 9 4 suited pretty good some suited cards as bluffs big blinds to small blinds uh over here i am i don't i cannot call a check raise and i do think that this board is so draw heavy that if my opponents decide to do something it will be by check raising 
I would definitely be balanced there. Say that means that my turn check does not mean that I'm necessarily weak. So I could still check a hand like King Nine or King Ten or some King Queen even. Um, even had like Ace Jack's pretty strong, right? That I could value bet on the river. So, um, I mean, obviously I don't have any raising hands, so I'm just gonna fold. Um, but I would have definitely attempted a bluff, especially with all the flush draws missing. What a game! What a game, what a game. I'm almost just only showing this hand just to show that you fold it <laughs> from small blind. I mean, you can raise it small blind to big blind, of course, but... <clears throat> uh, yeah, that's gonna be a raise or a call, I would say. Mm. Uh, I think I'm going to turn this into a bluff again. You see, I, I, I don't want to put a, turn a 9 into a bluff here, but a 7 beats doesn't beat an 8 and a 9, and 9 beats an 8 and a 7. So which hand's more suited for bluffing? A 7 as opposed to a 9. Um, this is true for tournaments as well. It's very important to keep that in mind. Uh, I am going to bet there on the river. I think that if he has a jack, they're very likely to continuation bet as a bluff or that they're going to check raise the flop uh, as a semi-bluff. So... Um, I'm gonna use this as a bet. So again, try to think about where ranges come from. Uh, here, it's false. We don't call from the small blinds ever. Um, what's important is hands like fives, fours, sixes, seven, eight, seven, seven, eight, seven, six, five suited. These are not 100% opens. Very important to remember that. If you open this hand, 100% from under the gun, you're gonna get smashed. The nice thing is though, when you do, I mean, it's really important to just like be aware of ranges and, and look them up um, and know that what those frequencies look like. Uh, the nice thing is when you do open them, you always get the call re-raises. So that's pretty class. Amazing boards for me. The amazing turn. And we're gonna have four bets over in this table. This queen off. Call here. I don't think that's it. Um, but yeah, this will be a bluff for us. We have the worst hand imaginable. In this instance, it doesn't really matter that we have spades because they're never gonna have one of these spades. And um, it's a backdoor flush draw, so it's less less harmful to bluff with those. But with the ace queen, they called our. Uh, 29. And over here we're gonna bluff now because we have the worst hand possible. This is the worst hand that we could possibly have on this board, which means it's an excellent bluff. Nice. Jam. Good call. Chop it up. All right, so this, uh, this bluff was really nice. It's so important to recognize that, right? You have to bluff with your worst hands. That, if you look at my whole range, right? That was the very worst hand that I opened under the gun that doesn't make a pair. So that's just the one you're gonna have to use because the most efficient way to bluff is to bluff with a hand that doesn't beat anything when you check. I will fold. So the fact that I re-raise an under the gun opener makes me give that uh, that re-raise a lot of credits. Fold. Again, if you bluff with hands there, ace 10 and ace jack. It's just gonna be an easy fold. Uh, fold. These are all hands to play in tournaments, right? Even that ace nine, the king three. The, the the tendu suited everything plays in tournaments but it's just so much different uh, this would definitely be a raise again we don't call from the small blind I'm hammering down all these things so you guys remember I think they're gonna re-raise all of their strong Broadway combos well that's not th that is that is true but they're still gonna have a bunch of kings right but still 
Um, I do think that they'll never have sevens, tens, or kings, or king, ten suited, because all of that re-raises. So I can up my betting amount, my bet uh, bet size, based on that, which is nice if I can bet bigger sometimes, because I had eight high. I will say it's, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun to be out here uh, doing this. Maybe we can open some of this under the gun. I could be massively mistaken, but who knows? We will see. It could be, you know, it's good. I, I remember something about offsuit of tens under the gun. It could be ace ten and king ten only. You know, it's one of those things. And but now it becomes super interesting, right? Because if you play against somebody really good, then uh, somebody really good might know, hey, you're not supposed to have tens because ace ten either bets a flop or the turn. King-10 best of flop or the turn, and those are the only hands you're supposed to open. So that it would be amazing if that opens the door to some check-raise bluffing, right? Like, that's how you have to think about these situations. If you just say, like, hey, I only think this player can have 10s, and the rest of the hands he can't have anymore, that means that it's a good opportunity for me to represent a 10, because I have way more of them. So, very cool. I have no fucking clue if this is a call or not. I have no fucking clue. All right, we have pocket tens here. <laughs> All right, so we don't call along with jack seven offs or off suited hands, multi way. Don't raise this. Don't really even know what the bottom is that we raise with. Six off. Probably is in there a little bit. Who knows? It's pretty good to have a king. And again, very heavy. Three best strategies. They seem like a regular. Uh, yeah, raise only, we don't limp, we fold the raise. I hope that those tips are going to be really valuable for you guys. Um, I do think that it's going to take a lot to get used to, but you know, sometimes you need to make big adjustments. Obviously, charts, you can find charts on how to play in cash games on uh, BBC Poker. It's the best way to go about it, right? It's uh, You might as well get... Um, Obviously, you can't use those while you're playing, but it's good um, to do some researching. Um, I'm going to turn this into a buff. Again, it's the bottom, loses to the most, it loses to eights, nines, tens. It's also, what's also very important is the fact that it also doesn't block any of the combinations that have a jack or a ten or a king in them, right? So... Um, you can see it's, it's very technical, but it's very important. And one of the reasons I can get away with a bluff like that in cash games is your ranges are stronger than they are in tournaments because um, think about it, right? If you have like a full, full range and you cut off a big bottom of it because you're not supposed to call or you're not supposed to play too many hands, that also means that has the effect that your uh, range is stronger now the relative hand strength uh, of the hands that you're playing is going to be stronger because there's just a lot less garbage in it, right? If I don't have five to suit it, and if I don't have um, queen three offsuit, that means that um, the hands that I do have are going to be uh, better on average. Just a little bit of a lead. I think it's really nice. Well, let's not talk about blocking suits and backdoor flushes and stuff. <laughs> Feel like there's still a limit to that shit. Oh, I'm just gonna put a little over bet in. Didn't get raised pre, means they don't have aces, tens, or nines. Probably not even ace ten. So I can put maximum pressure. It's gonna give up here, I think. South face. Almost clicked max. Nice to have that button in cash games. Oh, 
Wow. No reason to bet. If we bet here, we'd be turning a 5 into a bluff. And again, that's too good. So ace-4 is infinitely better with the bluff than ace-5 because ace-5 beats a lot of other hands. And ace-4 doesn't beat a lot of hands. Raise with deuces. I think from this position we can open any pocket pair. I don't even think that deuces might... I don't think deuces are an open from these positions. I mean, even threes is a fault under the gun and fours and fives don't want to always raise. If you're looking at charts, by the way, what's really important is this thing. It's a random number generator. If you do something 50%, I, I know this is advanced and people talk about RNGs all the time and stuff, but you can just do this. Like if something, let's say something is a 50% raise, right? In a, in a situation, then you just generate it. If it's uh, one to 49 or, or one to 50, then you fold. And if it's 51 to 100, then you raise. And then that's how you decide. So let's say uh, this is a re-raise a certain amount of, let's say 50% of the time. I just go here. I just do this. It's about 50. So that means that I'm going to raise. Like that's that's how you can do it. And that might be very technical, but th this just happens so often in cash games that I really don't see a way around uh, using this um, when you want to take it more serious. So um, that's just a tip. Do with it what you will. Hmm. All right. Hmm. A bit hard. All right. It's, it's kind of easy. Pretty sure the guy's a regular. Let's go change him. It's a tournament note that I have on him. It's important to know, I guess. I mean, when you start playing high stakes, it is. When you play the fucking $4 bounty builder, no offense, but it's just not important. But it's pretty important for me because if somebody wins a 200 zoom cash, I might see them in a $1,000 tournament and have a completely wrong uh, estimation on them. All right, we're suited. Suited Broadway, we never fold versus three bets. Um, if I am going to bluff fair, it's probably going to be King 10 or King 9 or Ace 10 suited or something. Wow. No idea how to play these flops. My estimation is that we have a lot of suited hands so we can raise. I wouldn't really know where our bluffs come from. But it doesn't mean it's bad to raise. Okay, call the raise from the small blinds. Very interesting. I think I'm gonna call just because I have so many dog shit hands here. I mean, I flat call preflop means I don't have aces, uh, pocket fives or ace king. I then call the flop, I flat call the turn. My sense. That's good shit, Bratishka. Um, I think my call is okay though, for sure. Beats bluffs, right? My hand does. All right, we called from the big blind to the small blind. I'm gonna round out the session there. I think that's uh, good. always sit out next big line so you get to play your free hands what <laughs> uh fold. we don't call from the small blinds fold that
And that's it for table two. Play mostly three bet here again. That is a really large, they're not full stack, it's a really large four bet. So normally I would definitely want to call versus four bets with suited broadways. But the fact they're not full stacks also probably means they're bluffing less. Because believe it or not, guys, good players bluff more. And I'm not even saying it's bad, but it's very unlikely they're regular. So it's gonna fold. Just gonna fold. And that is also it for the second table. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please leave a comment. I mean, now you guys have to let me know what you think. You guys wanted to see cash games. This were cash games. I hope there was useful stuff in there. Um, so drop a comment down below. If you like what you see, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I'll see you guys next time for another Learn With Legs. Peace.